This is KGW News at 5. COVID-19 vaccine eligibility expands in Oregon with the last huge group of seniors becoming eligible for shots today. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us here for KGW News at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. 258,000 people 65 through 69 years old joined hundreds of thousands still trying to get their first shot in an ever evolving system in the Portland area. KGW's Pat Doris reports. This morning, for the first time in weeks, there was not a mad scramble online to get appointments for COVID vaccinations at the Oregon Convention Center. After a disastrous performance last week by the website, organizers kept people out and instead began calling a list of seniors selected at random by the Oregon Health Authority. The OHA is working off lists of people who signed up at the Get Vaccinated Oregon site, and you can still register there if you are eligible. But even with the change, many, like Catherine Rutledge, ran into confusion. Then, She's trying to uh, sign up her husband for a so shot. This morning when you went online, were you using the chat bot and trying to get appointments that way? I did that. And then I also just like searched the website um, and I couldn't find anything. Um, and I'm pretty good with technology. <laughs> um, I couldn't figure out any way to get a notification. Um, it just wasn't clear to me. There is still plenty of work to do as Oregon's confusing rollout of the vaccine continues in the greater Portland area. Some pharmacies are starting to offer appointments, but there are challenges there too. Walgreens admitted they had some issues after viewers complained to us about glitches that kept them from reserving open appointments today. Legacy Health last week estimated 230,000 seniors, 70 and older, are still trying to get that first shot. Adding 65-year-olds into the pool of candidates today made that task even harder. I just have a lot of concerns about this new process in addition to the existing. I mean, it's, there's just so much confusion. One of the groups trying to help seniors is the Hollywood Senior Center. Amber Kern Johnson is the executive director. Her group gathered volunteers to help seniors sign up online. But now she worries that waiting for a phone call will not be much better. There's going to be a lot of you know, people who aren't answering the phone right away, as, as we a lot of people have been trained. You know, let's not, because it could be a scammer or you know, everyone is checking their messages. While the convention center reservation website was closed, OHSU's sign-up website for the airport drive through shot clinic was open and the 2,400 available appointments went fast this morning. Amid the shortage of vaccine and confusion on how and where to sign up for shots, there is some good news. 34,000 doses of the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine will arrive in Oregon sometime this week, according to the state. I think this is uh, great news. I think the more vaccines we can have in this fight at this point in the game is... Uh, Welcome news. Dr. Justin Jin is an infectious disease doctor at Providence, Portland. He said we should take whichever vaccine we can get first, and that having another option will help the country. I think this is going to be a welcome step um, in order uh, for our country to be able to get back to some semblance of normalcy uh, to have a third vaccine. It's unclear exactly where all the Johnson & Johnson vaccines will end up in Oregon, but the OHA says a majority will go to local health departments. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Let's take a closer look at the progress individual counties in our area are making with the vaccine rollout. In Oregon, those in green administered COVID shots to more than 15% of their residents. That's Multnomah, Hood River, Lincoln, Polk, and Benton among them. Columbia County is trailing way behind the others with just over 9% of its residents vaccinated. In southwest Washington, Pacific, Waukiakum, and Klickitat counties are leading the way. The latest available data shows the three counties have now vaccinated more than 16% of their residents. Clark County, you see in blue, has given shots to a little over 9% of residents. But that number should go way up. Clark County says it's getting more than 14,000 first doses from the state health department this week. That's about 10,000 more than the county is usually allotted.
To our schools now, more students are headed back to the classroom. High school students in the Evergreen School District will start returning to in-person learning this week. Ninth graders went back today and older grades will be phased in through the end of the week. In Lake Oswego, second and third grade students in public schools also began their hybrid model today. And tomorrow, kindergarten and first graders in the Salem-Kaiser School District will return to hybrid learning. Many students in Oregon are back to playing sports. This week, Salem-Kaiser Public Schools will hold their first competitions after starting practice last week. Students in the district can participate in football, soccer, cross country and volleyball. James Duncan is mom, Janica I should say, Duncan is mom to five. Her son Braxton is a high school football player in the Central School District. She says he gets to play his first game against North Salem this weekend. Duncan says the upcoming games and practices have given her son something to look forward to and made him more focused on school. Better, but for these kids in sports, they need to be passing their classes in order to be able to play. And so that is huge for these kids. It gives them a motivation to do their schoolwork. District leaders say students will have to wear masks at all times while participating and remain physically distant. No spectators will be allowed. Other larger districts, including Portland Public and Beaverton schools, are also now allowing fall sports with safety protocols. It's a pandemic of its own. Gun violence plaguing the city of Portland with at least five shootings reported on Sunday alone. Police say they don't think any of them are related. And what's even more concerning, there have been no arrests. The first call came just after midnight. Police say they found one man injured in the Argay Terrace neighborhood. He was shot several times but is expected to live. The next, about four hours later, near East Burnside in Hazelwood. Officers found one shell casing, but they say there was no evidence the bullet hit anything or anyone. Then, shortly before 1.30 in the afternoon, another shooting in the Park Rose neighborhood. In that case, one person had to be taken to the hospital. We're not sure how serious their injuries were or their status tonight. Around 9 p.m., more gunfire in Hazelwood, this time near Southeast 139th and Main. There, officers say they found more than 20 shell casings on the ground, but no victims or noticeable property damage. While on the scene of that shooting, officers heard more shots and went to investigate. This fifth shooting taking place near Southeast 148th and Southeast Stark. Witnesses told police people fired shots from a car and sped off. Twelve shell casings were found. Police say bullets struck a nearby car and building. Police say this isn't an exhaustive list. There could be even more shootings that took place Sunday. Gun violence in the city is up more than 90 percent from this time last year. More than 170 shootings have been reported so far in 2021. That's compared to 88 this time last year. And they have swept up the broken glass, but there's still a lot of plywood up in the Pearl District. That part of downtown saw a march turn into a vandalism attack over the weekend. It's not the first time the Pearl has been hit by demonstrations either that caused some big property damage. This week, the Portland City Council will consider an ordinance that would make it easier to put up security lights and gates. The mayor's office says it's behind the ordinance to help residents and businesses protect themselves better. But a Pearl business owner wants the city to get help for police to stop the ongoing destruction. This has been going on for nine months. Where are our resources? When are they going to invest here and protect our citizens? Rice employs 18 people trying to get back to work now that the establishment can partially reopen. And he says vandals are hurting all of them trying to get back on track. We are hearing tonight from the lawyer of a woman suing the so-called TikTok doc for sexual harassment and abuse. Dr. Jason Campbell went viral during the pandemic for his dancing videos. A woman who worked at the VA hospital next to OHSU is suing Campbell and OHSU for $4.5 million plus punitive damages. The lawsuit cites all the ways the woman reported unwanted photos, texts, and touching. It also says an OHSU investigation found that Dr. Campbell did harass the woman and violated its code of conduct 
but was not punished. We have evidence that OHSU intentionally buries these types of complaints to protect its male doctors. We've been contacted just since we filed the complaint by literally over a dozen women who have been harassed and reported that harassment to OHSU, none of which we're aware of resulted in a termination of anyone. In a statement, OHSU said in part, quote, OHSU does not condone behavior as described in the lawsuit. We are continuously working to evolve our culture, policies, and practices to provide an environment where all learners, employees, patients, and visitors feel safe and welcome. Campbell is no longer a resident at OHSU. His attorney told us his client is innocent and this case will not be tried in the media.